Welcome to the Tabletop Empire, my name is Nate, and today we will be starting Chapter 7, Starships and Vehicles, in our Beginner's Guide series, where we go through the entire cool rulebook, chapter by chapter, breaking down all the core concepts. In this video specifically, we will be covering vehicles and their characteristics and weapons, as well as any modifications you may want to make to them. So buckle up and let's get started. Starting off with the different types of vehicles, the options that you have available will depend on which books you own, because each core rulebook has different options. Edge of the Empire will mostly focus on vehicles civilian and criminal types that people would have. Age of Rebellion focuses more on rebellion and imperial vehicles, and Force and Destiny has a mix between the two. Each book also splits the vehicles into a couple of categories, which can include air speeders, land speeders, wheeled and tracked vehicles, walkers, starfighters, patrol boats, shuttles, freighters, transports, gunships, crew cruisers, capital ships, and battleships. No matter the size though, every vehicle shares a list of characteristics that include handling, speed, silhouette, defense, armor, hull trauma threshold, system strain threshold, and customization hard points. Let's break each of those down. So handling is the ease of ability to maneuver and how well it responds to the pilot and the crew. This will be based on various factors such as size, shape, control systems, mass, or general awkwardness. In game terms, the handling stat determines how many boost or setback dice are added to the piloting check, with zero being the baseline. So if the handling is negative, then you add that many setback dice, and if the handling is positive, then you add that many boost die. Speed indicates a vehicle's top speed and acceleration stat. The listed speed is the max speed the vehicle can reach. A pilot can always choose to go slower though. Speed zero will indicate a stationary vehicle, and higher values indicate higher max speeds. One could be an AT-AT walker, whereas five could be a TIE fighter. Silhouette is what indicates a vehicle's size, and can range from zero to ten. One is is still the size of a human or astromech, an X-Wing would be 3, a Vindicator Star Destroyer would be a 7, and 10 would be reserved for the very largest of space stations or ships such as the Death Star. Defense is the same as normal combat, each point in defense adds a setback die to attacks made against the vehicle. The difference is that there are defense zones on ships and vehicles. Silhouette 4 and under ships have just a forward and rear, or aft, defense zone. Anything 5 or larger will have 4 which is forward, aft, port, and starboard. So front, back, left, and right. The max defense a ship can have in any zone is four, regardless of whatever the ship's size is. Now what's cool is most types of defense can be assigned or angled to different parts of the ship where it's needed the most by rerouting power from one part of the ship to another, which will reduce the defenses in the one part of the ship and increase that amount somewhere else. Armor is a starship's second line of defense and the only protection for most ground vehicles. This is just its soak value, so that would be flat damage reduction equal to the armor value. Hull trauma threshold is the vehicle's HP or wounds equivalent. It's the ship's sturdiness and how much damage it can take. System strain threshold will indicate how well the internal systems are holding up. And next week we'll talk about ship combat and taking damage and we're going to cover this topic a bit more. Lastly is customization hard points and how customizable the ship is, how much room is there for modifications. We're going to dive into ship modding at the end of this video. Next up is vehicles and starship weapons, but if you're finding this video helpful so far, please do me a massive favor and blast that like button. Thanks. Vehicle weapons can range from light repeating blasters to massive turbo laser batteries, and they will all share the same general characteristics. Range is the max range of the weapon. Damage is the base damage the weapon does, and each success adds one damage. Critical hit rating is how many advantages are required to trigger a critical hit. Ships have their own critical injury table, which we will cover later in the chapter. And the fire arc is the direction the weapon can be fired. Now, each fire arc covers a 90 degree angle depending on where it's mounted. A weapon can cover multiple fire arcs, or just one. It really depends on the weapon and the ship. But there are also dorsal and ventral, or top and bottom fire arcs. A dorsal fire arc cannot attack the ventral side and vice versa. The last characteristic is special qualities which works the same as non-ship weapons. You can find a list of ship weapons in your books and a helpful little table on these pages. As you can see, there are some different sounding weapons listed here. The book has some more background knowledge on these, but that's something I'll probably cover later sometime, since it doesn't really tie directly into the game mechanics and they're, you know, they're more for the narrative side of the game. Ships and vehicles also have the ability to have modifications. Thankfully, the rules for modding vehicles and ships is exactly the same as what we covered in chapter five for gear and equipment. The only difference is that mods will cost 10 times more on ships due to their size in comparison to equipment and weapons. If you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna leave a card in the corner so you can check it out after this one, but I'm gonna briefly cover the rules again. The quick version is that 
attachments are pretty easy. You just buy them and, you know, take the time to put them on the ship. There's nothing that's really required. The book lists a couple of different attachment options that you may want to add to your ship. Go and look through those. They're kind of neat. They can provide effects such as upgrading a gunnery check or uh, adding one armor, that kind of thing. Modifying attachments again is where things get a little bit more complicated. The quick version is that you buy parts for a thousand credits with the increased cost for vehicles and ships. Uh, then with some quiet time, a toolkit, a workbench, you perform a hard mechanics check. If you fail, you can't try again. Despairs break the attachment. Subsequent mods on the same attachment increase the difficulty by one and increase the price by another thousand. And that's really the only difference here. If you guys have any questions at all about this video, please leave a comment down below. I do my best to answer every single one. And if you found this helpful, please do me a favor and blast that like button. It really helps us out. And if you guys are new here, this is the start of chapter seven of a ongoing series breaking down the entire core rule book. And so go back and check out chapters one through six. There's a link down in the description description below or I'll put a card up in the corner. There's a lot of really helpful information so go and watch it. Yeah but that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one but until then and as always may the force be with you.